Granted, I certainly looks like he's all business tonight. You know, I don't know if I've ever seen that guy smile. He's always really intense, focused, concentrated on the task at hand. Well, that's probably, that's probably the reason why he's 7-1 right now. But he's looking to avenge that one blemish on his record. Split decision, first fight ever. This will be his third title fight in a row. So you know the guy's been traded hard. Absolutely, he's been uh, stacking up best lately. That was one of the sponsors tonight, so he's got easy access. Well, he is greeted by a sea of red. Wow. I don't think Moses can part that. I guarantee you, uh, Snake Man. <laughs> Rock's coming out full force tonight. That's just crazy. You know, that really shows uh, the unity these guys all have. You know, you, you go to the gym every day, you punch your friends in the face, you become closer somehow. It's really, like, it's really weird how that works, but that's how it is. You're like family. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, me and my partner in crime, uh, Pat Sweet, you know, uh, the co-owner of Modern Warrior MMA with me, uh, Sometimes we sound like an old married couple in the gym. It's uh, pretty ridiculous. You know, all of our students uh, pretty much know have accepted that at, at, at this time. I think he loves me more than he does with his wife. Coming out open to break a little bit of a losing streak here. Lost his last two in a row. And, uh, you know, I don't think he's happy with that. He hasn't... No, uh, did you not see his face when he walked in there? I don't know. He always looks like tense. Yeah. He hasn't fought in a little over six months. So I think he probably took some time off, started working hard with Team Rock over there. And, you know, he's probably assessed why he thinks he lost. And I think he's hoping to come out and prove against a very tough opponent, Shane Crenshaw. Yeah, sometimes you definitely need a little uh, time to read to yeah. touch between Shane Crenshaw and Chris Smith for the lightweight title. Big oh, hand. big right hand right off the start. Looks like Chris is trying to find his rhythm right now. It seems a little tense. Yeah, you know, uh, it could be a little bit of ring rust, you know, like seven months without, uh, you know, stepping in there. He's just trying like a new form of movement is what it looks like, you know. He's, he's a tough guy, though. I've seen him uh, in a fight with Dewan Owens where, I mean, he just got wailed on. And then in the last last minute of the last round, he drops Dewan Owens. Oh, yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've seen, you know, Chris Smith, he's fought a ton of tough guys. You know, he fought Kevin Ferrant. Juan Owens, Shane. Yeah, he's, he's fought a ton of uh, top talent. So I mean, you know, there's there's nobody that's in there that's gonna shake him at this point. Like two guys that are uh, pro right now, you know. Yeah, Ke Kevin Fryant's undefeated pro right now. Juan also went professional. I'm not really sure of his record though. And then um. Filling each other out a little bit. Oh, nice 
body nice shot. body shots by Chris. Uh, He's been eating Shane's uh, right hand so far in the round, but now he's now, now he's starting to return a little bit, he's starting to loosen up. It, it kind of looks like Shane's fighting a little bit like uh, Dan Henderson is. You know, he's really like the jab is just a feeler for that big overhand right that he's trying to land with a lot of power on it, hoping to turn the lights out on Chris Smith here. Yeah, absolutely. He's just trying to make him blink so he can catch him with that right hand. Getting a little, getting loose here. He's, he's starting to throw a lot more, uh, you know, and he's throwing some multiple combos, going up and downstairs, nice. which uh, I like to see. Changing the levels is, is just not people just don't do it enough. And this guy is coming out and showing that he has the skills to do that and put it together out here in the uh, hexagon. Absolutely. I mean, and you, know, you you can actually clear. Uh, uh, a shot to the head a lot quicker than you can a body shot. They they stay with you and uh, they just make life miserable for a little while. Keith, do you think that Chris might have come out in this fight in this round a little tentative to throw, worried about the takedown of Shane Crenshaw, being that he does have an excellent shot? Um, you know what? That, that's very likely a possibility. Either that or maybe he just didn't warm up enough. Yeah, he, it, it seemed like he was very very tentative and tense. Yeah, sometimes it's uh. 30 seconds. Go. Not exactly sure what he was trying to say to him. Uh, it's time to. Time to go. Maybe that. Maybe that fits as well. Uh, now we're that starting to see some swinging. That was definitely it. Now they're going at it. Very exciting. Oop, seeing a little uh, welt uh, forming on uh, Shane Crenshaw's eye. That is not good for him. This is a five-round, four-minute fight. Total of 20 minutes all together, one minute rest. This is a long fight if, uh, if it keeps up like this. Until uh, the last 30 seconds there, <laughs> when Chris gave him the, uh, it's time to start throwing down, and uh, they started letting him go there. Yeah, honestly, that's a that's a tough one to call. Um, I might have to go with Shane Crenshaw on this one. Um, yeah, he he's, he got that little takedown. You know, he landed a couple of nice hard right hands. Forward pressure, probably. Forward pressure. Um. But you, you never know which way to uh, real difficult to, uh, that's a real difficult round to judge. Plus our scorecards always seem to differ from theirs. Unless it's an obvious. Well their, their scorecards seem to differ from their own. <laughs> so I don't I don't think that's as much our problem as it is their problem. It's definitely theirs. Alright, five fans, we need an action packed second round. It's up to you to get the energy going. You think they have some training program. No, not too much. Um, I think pretty much you just got to show up, I think. And get paid to uh, scribble on a piece of paper. I think the requirements are the ability to count to ten. I like this guy's hair. He wins. Shot stiff jab down the stairs. You know, jabbing down the stairs like that with your lead hand is like it's a, it's a technique that, you know, you gotta have a lot of confidence in your head movement, or you just gotta have a hard head to stick it in there. Absolutely. Um, yeah, the other, the, the other thing that I keep in mind is you, you've gotta lower your level first, or else uh, you're gonna leave your chin exposed. You know, if you're just punching down. From a high you, you, you don't have the ability to tuck your chin into your shoulder at that point. No, and then you get knocked out by a jab from the other guy. Yeah, or, or that hook lands flush and you, know, you uh, wake up looking at stars. You know, a beautiful example of a body puncher that's uh, still active in MMA today is, uh, oh, big punches here. Uh, Nam fan, uh, he 
has that one two liver shot. I love it. He swears by it. He a lot of fights with it. It's beautiful stuff. Arm punch. Rocky Marciano style. <laughs> That's starting to concern me is how uh, Crenshaw's backing out. He's uh, popping his chin up. If uh, Chris is still providing a lot of pressure, that 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 might might cause some problems. If you look, other than that, he's he stays pretty tight. It's just when he's pulling out, he, he has a tendency to stand straight up and pop that head up. He does the same thing. If you look, when they both come in together and he steps forward, it's just like a natural, you know, instinct for a lot of people. His chin does stay up a lot higher than it should. Right there. Yeah, absolutely. It just naturally comes up. You know, if Chris was able to time like a punch from Crenshaw, he could easily just throw, tag him right on that chin. Oh. They're going at it now. Chris Smith, you, you, every fight you've ever seen from him, he is always shown he is one tough guy. He is showing it to you tonight for the belt. Of a fight I've ever seen. It's kind of a, you know, a couple jabs. Well, that's, um, that's kind of common for a lot of Chris Smith's fights. You know, he has, a, he, has a, he, has a, he has a weird, awkward movement to begin with. It, uh, oh. Big, big overhand right. You know, um, I, I think he tries to do that a little bit to lower you. But, um, you yeah, know, it seems to be, it seems to work pretty decently for him. Um, Shot. Crenshaw really needs to keep that chin tuck. Any of these, these uh, you know, just flurry exchanges here, his chin's just coming. Absolutely. Yeah. And Chris Smith's the kind of guy that can take a lot of punishment, eat six Yeah, punches, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, Chris Smith has, has, a, has a dynamite chin on him. Um, you know, he's really hard to drop. So he'll, he'll, take, he'll take some punishment uh, to find his mark. That can take six to land one of his, and that's how he, he you know, he can walk away with a win. How about it, Dale? Let's call this here to five beautiful ring giving us our ringside info. Round number three. On the way, boys. I'd like to thank our sponsors. Extremely animated with his cornering. Look at this. I love it. Also, true honor out here tonight. You know, I think he's actually saying what we were talking about before. To pull the head back and counter off of that punch whenever Crenshaw's chin comes up here. He's doing the lean right now. Either that or he's just teaching some dance moves. Can't be sure. All right, back to action in the ring. Round number three. Most of the time when you're looking at Crenshaw, you never know he was in the middle of a title fight. He's so relaxed. Here we go. Yeah, he's, he, he's just putting on his tie and going to work. That's the way it looks here today. That's the way it looks every day. Come on, the jazz from Crenshaw land. It's a good thing. Um, yeah, I like to see uh, Crenshaw mixing it up a little bit more using that left hand. Oh! Both land 
getting some good shots right there. Nice slam. Crenshaw gets the take. I think that's a uh, smart move on Crenshaw's part. Seal, seal this round up. Yeah, you know, it, Chris Smith's yeah. not one of the guys you want to get tied into a, you know, who's got the heavier hands contest right in the middle of the uh, hexagon here. Crenshaw's playing the entire time. Get him used to standing up, so it's even easier to seal the deal on one of these takedowns. Quite so possibly, um... Now, I think, I think, uh, I think Crenshaw wanted to do really test his hands and, uh... Ooh, got a potential guillotine right here. He has won by guillotine before against Josh Stanley right here in this exercise. Oh, oh. Oh! Chris Smith, what a tough guy. He's still trying to fight it off. And he fights the wow. oh, Amazing. I hey, a couple of points where I thought he might be going out. Lynch has got his back, but Chris Smith does not seem panicked right now. you need to do instead of like panicking in situations like this where you have a tough guy like Crenshaw who has your back. Absolutely. Um, you know, you, you look at Chris Smith, he doesn't look like you know, the most imposing athlete. Yeah, he's athletic, but you know, it's, it's, there's some guys that just, just win fights because they're fighters. That's why he has victories on his record right now. That's why he's got victories against some high caliber guys. You know, guys that might be better athletically than him. Maybe even better fighters, but it's, it's, I think it's his sheer willpower. And he knows what he can handle. He knows what he can take. That's why he's like, he's going toe to toe right here with uh, Shane Crenshaw. His head actually looks way bigger than Crenshaw's. Head. There's the problem you see what we were talking about earlier when a guy rocks somebody to just start throwing those hands and his shot is coming. That immediately switched Crenshaw into wrestling mode. Now he's, now he's looking for a submission from the north south position. It's a hard choke to finish here. Like right on the face. Absolutely, you can you tell by its effectiveness by the, uh, the immediacy of Shane Crenshaw's shot. That's the problem uh, with some of these guys when they rock somebody is, uh, you know, they immediately try to follow it up once they feel one, you know, land solid. And if a shot's coming right up after that, you usually end up whipping right over the field. Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's one of the hardest things to overcome, though, the little pit bull disease. You know, once you, when, once you land a solid shot, you want to land another solid shot. You know, uh, pretty much everybody wants to uh, put a put somebody to sleep. Uh, it doesn't matter. A lot, of time, a lot of times at that point, it doesn't matter what your corner is yelling, what your mom is yelling, you know, what you know is the right thing. You want to take that guy's head off uh, you know, once you land that nice hard shot and you see, you see it had an effect. I guess it's just human nature. Come out Absolutely. The round here. These are the title rounds. Oh, nice overhand right. Chris is landing some good shots. Crenshaw's got a hard head here. Absolutely. I think if Chris wants to walk away with a decision, though, after a round where he was, you know, he landed some good shots, but he was also taken down, he's going to have to, like, put the pressure on a little bit. Land a couple more of these shots. Take. 
take the judges by the hand and say, hey, I'm hitting this guy in the face. Absolutely. You know, we've got a... Very nice. Very nice. Now we start. Now we start seeing Chris Rob uh, really step up the game. Now he, th there's been a couple. Uh, there's been the first two rounds there where there was no clear cut winner. Um, if, I'm, if I'm these guys, I don't want to risk it. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, coming from the respectable teams that they do, you know, they have a game plan laid out. The coaches are telling them the right things. It's just a matter of being able to go out there and execute. It. Absolutely. Now these are two well-respected camps. You know where they've got great coaches and great, uh, great staff. So I guarantee, at this point, they know the right thing to do. The problem is, do the judges know the right thing that's happening? Chris Smith got up so quickly and easily earlier. Now he's having to fight off a guillotine just to stay in this fight. Now, Crenshaw's got the back. Ear punches. Super. No. Looks like we've got a high school wrestling match right now. <laughs> oh, but Shane throws one hook in. He's trying to get that. Uh -oh. He's worked hard for it all night. Is it under the chin? I can't tell from this angle. Uh, he just gave him the thumbs up here. Yeah, I don't... Didn't have it yet. You know what? So it's some nice, do. nicely placed shots and some... Uh, by just cranking on somebody's face with a cable. Oh, uh, you can you can uh, dislocate their jaw, break their teeth into their mouth. That's what I mean. Um, I don't know why people give up so easily on a rear naked choke just because it's not under the chin. It hurt them. Make them hurt. Yeah, it's. I, I think it's just something that not a lot of guys have practiced doing. Um, you know, it's 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 a big no no in the gym. Yeah, you face some face crank somebody. Uh, yeah, somebody's going to give you an earful later. Uh, at, least I, at least I know that, that that's a rule in my gym. But in the cage, it's, perfectly, it's a perfectly legal move. Yeah, um, it's kind of like toe stomps. You know, you don't really want to work them hard at the gym. You know, just let them know they're there. Yeah. The way that Crenshaw is wrapping his leg around like that, you wonder if Chris Smith couldn't just grab his leg and sling him around like this. It'd be hard, but it's better than just giving up your back for this whole fight. Or this whole round. Is he going to fall for it? I just heard Snake yell. Yeah. Knee bar here. I think Shane heard that too, though. <laughs> That's the problem. Everybody needs code words for their team, so they're just like, uh, what would you call an Ebar? What would you secretly code an Ebar? Um, I don't know. Hoshi? <laughs> I'm thinking like, ouchie leg. You say it really fast, it sounds like ouchie leg. And then they do it. I, I was thinking about a candy bar, I'm hungry. So yeah, we've, we've, been, we've, we've been watching these fights for all, all night. Uh, I'm going to tell you straight up, I forgot to eat. Certainly had a great night of fights. So. You will be okay. This is the last round of the last fight here. Hershey Bar! Hershey Bar! <laughs> now, even that, if you snap the guy's leg, he snaps his pants. Hershey Bar. Depends on which way you want to look at it. Yeah. Nothing to the judges. Four minutes, fellas. Four minutes, fellas. I rarely agree with the announcer, but I, I think he's right on that. Trying to get a finish here. Oh, I, I always agree with that uh, mindset. 
I don't care if I know I've won every single round. I'm still, I'm still wanting to finish. This is a one tough fought for a takedown. Yo, I'm surprised, like, the refs stood some people up from, like, half guard and full mount. The refs, they, they, they stood people up from full mount. But, oh, there we go. Chris Smith makes great shot now. What a turn of events here. He's got the uh, those grappling socks on with the rubber footed things on right now. Yeah, I noticed that uh, earlier. Um. Never seen anybody actually use them except for uh, Jeff Monson once. Shane Crichton has like a butterfly guard. Oh, and he shoots up nice. But oh, Chris Smith comes back trying to get him out. Almost. But yeah, back in the butterfly. for a moment to try to explode up again and get back to his feet. Yeah, I have a, I have a feeling he's looking for it right about... You can't wait till he does it and say now. Now. Oh, come on! <laughs> oh, and he reverses the takedown. It looks like Chris Smith came pretty well prepared for the takedowns of Shane Crenshaw, but they didn't start coming until like round three and later in the fight. screaming at Chris Smith right now. Trying to motivate his fighter. Chris is looking him in the eye too. He's trying to fight Shane off. Shane is a tough guy. At the same time, I wonder if Crenshaw is looking him in the eye too. <laughs> Ten seconds left in this fight. And it looks like we are going to the judges scorecard. Who's more convincing with their hands up? That was one hard fought fight right there. Oh. If I was going on just a uh, post fight strut alone, I would go Chris Smith. Yeah. But um, I I'm actually going to have to give this fight to Crenshaw. I, I think it, I think it was a hardly contested fight. Um, I think it's real close. I think if we went fight metric and had legitimate numbers and statistics, yeah, I, I'm gonna give this fight to Crenshaw based on that. But just because uh, of human eyes, things they miss when they're looking at their phone, texting somebody, doing whatever, you know, they miss the little things that might have made it an entire round great for one guy. So, you know, you just never know. So, we're, we're, pretty much what you're saying is don't sex and call fights. Yeah, correct, sir. Oh. 
anxiously awaiting the judge's decision. Well, they had to watch the guys strut around afterwards, you know. It's, it was their chicken. That is important, you know. Um, I think every trainer tells their fighter that. But I wonder if it actually does make a difference. Yeah, you know, act like you won. I, you know, you gotta wonder, if, especially if it's the last round. Fighters, front and center, we have a decision. not want to go the distance, but, you know, it did. I mean, you can't blame yourself for that. You know, he's a tough guy, hard to finish, and you were looking for it the whole fight. Yeah, I really thought I had him, I think, at the end of the third round. I had that, that, that noise stop pretty tight, but just didn't have enough time. You know? yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's a submission that could take a couple seconds to uh, finish and yeah, save of, by the bell. Yeah, I wish I wouldn't have pushed this so early. It could have surprised him a little later on. But, you know, like I said, he's been working with some great guys down there at Team Rock. You know, it's, he's a tough kid, tough program, you know, and good coaches. So. He's always been a really tough guy, hard to put away, hard for a lot of guys to finish. You know, he's battled some of the toughest guys in North Carolina. Now you're on that list for a second time. Uh, do you think that, like, fighting for three titles, like, in a row has helped you with your cardio? Like, just being ready to fight 20 minutes straight? I mean, my cardio really isn't any better, but my mental toughness is. I know, no matter how tired I am, I can still go, you know? It's all in your head. It's nice to be in a little better shape because you don't feel, you know, so horrible afterwards, but you can still do it, you know? All right, is there anybody at all in North Carolina that you would like to uh, defend this belt against? Oh, uh, shit, yeah, I really don't care. I mean, if, if the opportunity comes, it comes. I kind of want to go after another one. I'd like to get one at 70, beef up a little bit, see what I can do over there. So, you know, we'll see. I actually heard that you have a fight scheduled in a month or so at uh, 170. Yeah, some kid named Wes Evans uh, down there in Myrtle Beach. I think he's a champ of some some quack organization, not really sure, but he can come get some. Him and him and his daddy, uh, Jim Evans, been running their mouth a little bit, so I'd like to give him a little taste of you know, my one-two I've been developing. Are you, uh, are you gonna be, are you gonna bring all three of your belts down? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to, yeah. I'll bring some of my state championship medals too, you know, we'll see. So, but you know, this is all for experience, you know, it's fun right now, but I know it's just, it's just experience in the end of the day, so. Tough for the guys, the better. You're gonna be hell in a metal detector, man. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. All right, man. That was a great fight. Thank you for letting us watch you perform. Oh, thanks for commentating, guys. Really appreciate it.